got the car run. Um, it's got about 30 miles on it. I have it back in to give it its 30 mile oil change. Uh, because of the cam break in, I wanted to run it just far enough uh, to get some of the wear, wear debris going and give it a quick flush. And then I'll probably do another one in a couple hundred miles, two, three hundred miles. Actually, the car runs pretty good. It's, there's still some things I'm going to need to shake out. Um, currently, it runs pretty good overall. It drives fairly well, but every now and then um, I've had some stumbles coming off idle. Uh, sometimes the idle's rough. Uh, I'm hearing gurgling noises coming out of the fuel tank and getting um, gasoline smell after I come and park the car uh, from back at the tank, not from under hood. So uh, something's probably still going on in the evaporative uh, system. Something's not right. Um, but overall, the car the car's running pretty good. I'm being careful with it, being that it's only got 30 miles and it's in break-in. Um, and like I say, some things are erratic, but I'm going to work my way through those in the coming uh, days and weeks um, as I get time. So that's good. I'm happy. I'm glad it's up and running. And uh, and so far, um, nothing nothing bad happening. Um, I did have to get underneath the car and and um, button up some things that I had left before I did the cam break in. I found I had a spark plug wire that was uh, not off all the way, but it was loose. Number eight was loose. The exhaust pipes where they come up to the exhaust manifolds weren't torqued quite as tight as I'd like. They were leaking a little bit, which is probably wh where I got a few puffs of smoke in my earlier videos. So I torqued those up. So the bottom, bottom side of the car is buttoned up well. I say I still have these kind of odd issues where it's not running right all the time, but I've got my scan tool on it and I'm doing test drives and, uh, and I'll start working through those and I'll report back when, uh, when I have something good to report. Hey, I'm back reporting on progress on the IROC. Um, I'm up to about 100 miles and I'm continuing to diagnose things. And um, I had one that was kind of tough and unusual, so uh, I'm going to show you some things here in a moment. But um, one of the reasons it's been running rough and, and intermittent, uh, intermittently having some issues, um, I've been setting an oxygen sensor code. I believe it was a 13. It's, the, it's a wiring code that says you have an open circuit in the oxygen sensor wiring. And I've been through the car. I... Uh, disconnected the sensor, I cleaned the terminals uh, of the connector where it goes back into the wiring harness and checked for drag to make sure that the, the connector was uh, contacting properly. I went back underneath the dash and pulled out the ECM and checked the wiring back to the ECM. Uh, everything checks out good. Uh, when you put it on the scan tool, you fire it up. It, um, it's what is it, about 500 millivolts when you first start the car. It's cold. Uh, it warms up for a couple of minutes. The, the, uh, you can see that the oxygen sensor starts to respond. The system goes into closed loop and, hey, it all looks great. And then you get out on the road uh, and initially it's got cross counts. It, it, it all looks normal. Uh, and you run it a few more minutes on the road and you start getting a little throttle on it. And then the, the uh, reading starts to get flaky. And uh, the OBD1 diagnostics are not real sophisticated. In order to set that wiring code, you've got a, I forget the exact timing, but it's, it's like several minutes at a constant throttle where the, uh, where the oxygen sensor is skewed one way or the other. So what I've done is, is I pulled out, this is the original GM AC Delco um, oxygen sensor that came with the car 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, what, 35. Uh, anyhow, I have the original sensor and I'm going to put this in the vise and test it. There's a means with a propane torch where you uh, put a voltmeter on here and measure this with propane torch. And if this one tests good, I'm going to pull the one out of the car that's a brand new sensor that's only literally got 100 miles on it and I'm going to test that sensor and make sure it's good. Uh, if this one tests good, I'll, I'll do a swap and we'll see if that fixes the problem. But uh, 
here in a few minutes I'm going to, I'm going to switch over and, and give you a look at a propane torch test of a single wire non-heated oxygen sensor. So let's test this original oxygen sensor. I've got um, my digital voltmeter connected positive to the main terminal. I can't really clip onto it so I'm going to just hold the negative up here like so. And you see we got about what 70 or so millivolts which is low, which is normal. So we'll put some heat on it. Okay, now I got almost 900 millivolts. It's looking pretty good. And we'll keep that, so we take it off, drops down to about 100 or so. We put the heat back on it. Boy, she goes right back up to 900. So that's pretty much how they're supposed to respond. And if you hold the heat on it, Let's just keep it steady here for a couple of minutes. It stays nice and steady. Above 800. And you can keep this, I've done this already, so you, you can keep this up for several minutes. And as soon as you take it off, or she goes back to 100 or less. So it, it switches pretty fast. When it gets to, when it shows L, that means it's overflowing and it's switching ranges for us but about 850 so this really old sensor um, th there are other specs on the sensor for how fast it switches and you know I can't say that this sensor is perfect but right now it's doing everything that I would expect it to do so I'm gonna put this one in the car and see how the car runs and make that um, and see if that fixes the way that it runs. Um, I'm going to switch and show you uh, the sensor that came out of the car, um, which has it definitely has some issues. So right now, put my probe on here. We're at nope. We're at zero millivolts. We'll put some heat on this guy. And it ought to start as it heats up. There yeah, we're starting to get a reading. 50, 100, there she's gotten hot. She's running about 800 millivolts. If I take it off, it drops right down to 25 or 30. Put heat back on it. Go back up to 800-ish. Actually, it should probably be 900 from what I understand. But that's working pretty good. Now let's just hold the heat on it here for a minute. And what you see is the longer you hold heat on it, all of a sudden it drops off. See it's in the 250, 260 range. It'll drop down, but as soon as you put the put the flame on it, it's no longer showing the, uh, it's no longer showing the 900, degree, uh, 900 millivolts like it was before. It's kind of interesting that it tends to want to drop down into that um, 200 to 300 ish range. I get 50. But I should be getting 800, 900, and I'm not getting anything close to that. I mean, it's certainly plenty hot if I keep the heat on it here again. I'm holding right in there around 300 or so, which is just about what it was doing in the car. So I took the old oxygen sensor. This is a brand new sensor that I just purchased, put on the engine, and now in break-in it's got you know 100 miles on it. I took the old 30 year old sensor and ran this test on it and it gets 900 to 950 millivolts, 0.9 volts and when you take the heat off it gets about a tenth and back and forth and um, so I'm going to say is um, this brand new sensor is defective 
and um, and I'll tell you as I I had put I had put the old sensor back in the car because it tested good, and the car now goes into closed loop and it's running a lot better and it's uh, cleared the code and uh, life seems to be better. Uh, the only downside with that original sensor is it's a little slow to heat up and sometimes it won't stay in closed loop at idle where this one did at least up until it went bad. Um, so I'll, I'll probably need to get a fresh sensor <clears throat> but um, it's a, a, an interesting test and the fact that I could make that sensor fail on the bench was also very interesting. <clears throat>